This car is special because it has the BYD Blade LFP batteries. Most other LFP vehicles have normal cattle cells, but this one has the BYD Blade batteries. And I've heard some interesting things, some very nice things about the charging curve on this vehicle. Not only that, it's a rear wheel drive LFP battery model, which are usually very efficient. And of course, rear wheel drive, you only have one drive unit, so uh, it is less energy loss when you are driving. You get further on less kilowatt hours, basically. So today we are going to test the efficiency of this car. And I'm so excited for this because this model is the cheapest Model Y that you can buy in Europe. And in the United States they also have an LFP model. It doesn't seem like the American model will have the same BYD blade batteries as this one. So just to show you everything about the vehicle so you know that I'm not messing around. Software additional vehicle information. So we have the premium model system. Uh, the standard range rear wheel drive model bike comes with the premium sound system. This is not the case on the model 3. Not the old one and not the new one either. They will differentiate. The nice thing about the Model Y is that you get the premium sound system anyways, and it sounds amazing. Um, heat pump, of course. Here you can see lithium iron phosphate battery. Um, let's not read about uh, the chemistry right now, but um, yeah, I'll talk more about LFP later in more videos. Not hardware for no Model Ys from Giga Berlin has hardware for yet, as far as I know. Tire pressure, I just filled up uh, the tires, they are about the same. Uh, everything was 2.9 bar, but it will fluctuate because it's minus 5 degrees outside, so it's pretty cold. So keep that in mind when you look at the efficiency of this car. I have preconditioning the car for a supercharger just to get everything warm. And I will of course end that and I'll make sure with this awesome app I can see all the info on the car. So we can uh, check the... Um, let's uh, just uh, check the temperature. Cell temp average is 27.8 degrees, which should be fine. It was 19 degrees when we started. LFP batteries like the BYD blade battery that is in this car is kind of... It's It performs worse in the cold usually. But Tesla has, a, Tesla has a pretty good battery management system, which is able to heat the battery when it's needed, like when you're charging. But of course... Uh, batteries with cobalt, normal electric vehicle uh, batteries like uh, NCA and NCM uh, chemistries perform better in the cold. So we will also test that with this car. In um, a coming video I'll talk about uh, this car as uh, in its entirety and how it performs in the cold. But as of right now the cell temperature is 28.3 degrees which I think is uh, a good starting point, uh, considering that uh, when I started this car uh, one hour ago, it was 19 degrees, so it has uh, had time to heat it up. I've done some motorway stretches just to get the car ready for an efficiency test. We are running on Nokian Hakapelita R5 EV winter tires. These are studless and the same that were on the Model 3 Highland that I tested. It doesn't seem to be a SUV specific tire, but it's wider at 255 instead of 235. We are running 20 degrees on the climate, no heat in the seat and no heat in the steering wheel. The climate is on auto, so it will maintain 20 degrees in the cabin. I have ended pre-conditioning and I'll reset the trip. Reset trip EF. Reset. I have checked the cabin climate. I have checked the tire pressure. 
everything seems uh, okay. We are at 68%, so higher than 67 actually, uh, uh, higher than the other test. Doesn't really matter as long as we are not full or not uh, completely out, so just in the middle. So uh, let's get going. Oh, I need to show you the plan as always. From here, through the motorway tunnel, turn around once more through the motorway tunnel and then back here. It's around 53-54 kilometers. We are slowing down for the first turnaround point. Our current average efficiency is 196 watt hour per kilometer. I suspect that uh, our efficiency will increase like usual over time. We are uh, slowing down for our second turnaround point. Our current efficiency is 196 watt hour per kilometer. We have used 5 kilowatt hours so far to drive 25 kilometers so far. We are at our last turnaround point. And our current efficiency is 181 watt hour per kilometer before pulling off the road here. We have driven 39 kilometers and used 7 kilowatt hours to drive those 39 kilometers. This is pretty good. It's extremely good for us. As you can see here, the battery voltage is stable at 340 volts and it has been since we were at 70% and now we are at 54% uh, but it's very stable. It's a characteristic of the LFP battery and when the voltage is stable uh, it is difficult to actually know how full or empty the battery is. That's one reason why Tesla recommends charging this car to 100% at least once a week. It won't hurt the battery, so there is no reason not to charge it full. But by charging it full, you'll actually get a better estimate of how many percent you have left in the battery. Because when it's charged to full, it'll uh, recalibrate the BMS, the battery management system. So it'll have a more accurate estimate of, uh, of the remaining ca uh, capacity of the battery. An LFP battery will not get hurt by uh, charging to 100%. So in reality, you get kind of more real world range if you charge mostly at home, like you should. Uh, because uh, other cars with NCA and NCM batteries, uh, that's uh, cobalt batteries, that's the normal uh, battery that's in the, all the long-range uh, Tesla models, you usually want to charge uh, to uh, as close to like 50% as possible, but most people set it to 80% and that's what Tesla recommends as well, uh, to not uh, reduce the top capacity of the battery. It doesn't like to be at 100% for a very long time. We are back. Let's take a look at the stats. 53 kilometers indicated that's uh, the correct number. We have used 9 kilowatt hours to drive those 53 kilometers, which gives us an average efficiency of 176 watt hour per kilometer. This is a pretty insane efficiency for such a large car. There are no SUVs that can compete with this efficiency. Um, we have to keep in mind that this is a rear wheel drive car, not a four wheel drive. So that's a disadvantage to this car, but you get the efficiency. So uh, that's awesome. Uh, very great efficiency on this 
rear wheel drive made in Germany Tesla Model Y with the BYD blade battery. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please subscribe. I have so much more to talk about uh, regarding electric vehicles and this car and other cars as well. And I appreciate you giving my channel a chance and uh, please just comment anything you like. Um, I have taken feedback from comments, I read all my comments and I try to reply to most of my comments as well. So just leave a comment down below. What do you think? What should I do the next time around? This time I, uh, I checked the tire pressure once more because I got reminded on my last efficiency test that uh, the tire pressure might be different between cars and of course that's a, that's a thing. So I made sure to check the tire pressures. Maybe there is something else that I need to look out for when checking the efficiency. So I appreciate all the comments. Thank you. Some interesting stats about this car. We are now at 51% and it's indicated 345 uh, volts. It was actually lower <laughs> when we were higher, which is... Uh, uh, but it has been around 350 all the time, which is common for LFB batteries. We are now using uh, one uh, kilowatt to actually heat the cabin. Oh, uh, nominal full pack is 59.5 kilowatt hours. That's the gross battery capacity. And we know it's actually around 60 kilowatt hours, the BYD blade battery. So that seems correct. You can see that the cell temp uh, maximum is 30 four degrees celsius then the cell temperature minimum is the 30 uh, 30 degrees which is correct 